Uh, right, I'm here with uh, I'm Ian Charles of Wizards. I'm here with Jeremy Holt of uh, of well, tell us who you tell us who you who you are and who you work. Hi, I'm Jeremy Holt. I'm a solicitor based in Swindon, and I work for a firm called Clark Holt Commercial Solicitors. Half of what I do is commercial law, and the other half is IT law. And I've written a thoroughly dull book on this subject, which is available <laughs> from all bad bookshops. So the, uh, the uh, self-deprecation aside, the... Uh, no, that's um, not self-deprecation. Well, all right, false, mo <laughs> well, we'll call false modesty then, shall we? Okay. Uh, <laughs> false modesty aside. Um, we're going to talk today about um, internet use and internet use policy and how uh, what employers need to do and so on. Yeah. Now, clearly, that the, you know, the internet has been uh, been around for, well, realistically, um, in, 20, 25 years. Well, commercially, commercially, it would be the mid to late nineties, really, yeah. and uh, you know the early the early That's 20s. twenty to twenty two years ago. Yeah, yeah, but it, well, commercially, it wasn't really kind of there right, at okay. that point. It was, uh, it was, it was available as a, as a kind of technical resource, really, that was that certain people in the business had access to. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, it really grew out of the Usenet, which was a slightly different, uh, slightly different term, uh, kettle of fish. But the the internet is there as it is now. The information superhighway, whatever we want to, whatever we want to call it, um, the greatest invention since the printing press, etc. Clearly, like all, uh, like all of great freedoms, it's open to abuse. Yeah. And um, what do we do? I mean. What what are the steps that a uh, that, that an organisation needs to take to to rein that in? I can remember when that first came in, and very few employers, or practically no employers, had any kind of policy for their staff uh, using the internet. And it is critically important uh, that employers have a policy for the staff using the uh, internet, because otherwise, if the staff do something daft, the employer can't show that they broke any particular rules. In my experience of advising employers. Uh, most staff, if you have a set of rules and it's reasonably sensible, most staff will just quite happily go along with it. It's just too much hassle to actually break the rules. Mm -hmm. You'll always get a few people who will. You'll always get a few people who will just spend all their time uh, researching holidays or looking at their horoscope or something like that. I tend to be quite liberal about staff being allowed to use the internet. You know, I'm sure when telephones came in, there must have been big discussions about whether the staff could use the telephone for their own personal calls. Slightly different area, that though, isn't it? I mean, the point with the, with the telephone when it first came out is it's very expensive to use. Yeah. And yes, there is there is a cost associated with bandwidth, but most 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 companies' bandwidth is yeah. is unused anyway. So no, that's, fair, that's a fair point. Not quite the same. Not quite the same thing. Yeah. Um, and it's also been until fairly recently, as I understand it, a a, a non a, a taxable benefit of a telephone on your desk. Um, yes, that's uh, yes, that's true. I was thinking in more in terms of the fact that if people are doing personal work on the internet, right. they're not actually doing their job, right. and yet it's during a period of time of the day when they're meant to be doing their job. So running the golf club, the fishing club, uh, planning the wedding. Yeah, um, you're very active. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, none of those. I've not I've done any of those things. Uh, the plan Recent, recently. No, no. Well, the, the point with the planning of the wedding is that it was all taken completely out of my hands. It was. Okay. Done. It Sorry. was. Uh, I, I was. I, 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 that was just nothing to do with me. I just showed up. No need to sort of go into it so much detail, <laughs> right? Bought okay. the suit. Other ceremonies are available. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <yeah, so, laughs> or you need not bother. Uh, <coughs> so um, that's rather too liberal, isn't it? Um, well, so so here we are. We, we've got a situation where, it, it, you know, there's they're really the more restrictions that you place place on employ employees, the, the the more difficult it can be. The the problem problem is, of course, is that there are, yeah, you know, the whole of the security industry, yeah. the people who make firewalls, the people uh, who make uh, people who make these things, yeah. they've made a great deal of money, and I mean a huge amount of money, yeah. out of selling fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Yes, that's true. I go along with that. And I'm, I mean, I've I've never done it myself, of course. There's no no question about that. And uh, you know, uh, but. We are the the whole point with that is that they are telling you is, is that you know is that uh, is that if you don't do obey all these things and you can perfectly feasibly monitor and very simply now monitor your your in, your em, employees employees use of use of the web yeah, yes you and, can and their emails yes that, so you that's can true. look for words words in in, in emails yeah, okay. you can look at uh, you can look for names of colleagues you can look for names of the teams. Yeah. Uh, other words which might include profanity, 
uh, and the like. I mean, what's the what's how's the law about that? How is how's that? Affect, I mean, is it okay provided you've told him you're doing it or? Uh? Well, the, the rule is, the general rule is that you're not allowed to monitor staff's emails, but there are some exceptions for things like computer security. Now, if you take my own firm as an example, I don't think that we have ever monitored our staff's use of email. There'd have to be an overwhelming reason why we might do that. Um, and, I mean, I think one of the reasons why we might have been tempted to monitor is if people have been spending too much time on some kind of personal side. But what I have discovered in the past is that if somebody is spending too much time on the internet doing some personal uh, issue and other people are having to do more work, the other people will go and tell the employer in those circumstances. So I think the other members of staff are probably the greatest ally of the employer okay. in those circumstances. The other thing is I just think it's a bit big brotherish if, uh, if you have to monitor your own st I mean, I, admittedly, we haven't got a vast number of people um, in our firm but if you have to, you know, if you have to resort to sort of monitoring um, your own staff's emails, in a sense, you've you've lost. If you do have to do that, it may be better to use an outside body to do the monitoring, so that if you're working alongside someone uh, and you've monitored their emails, and perhaps you've discovered that they're having an affair with somebody in, either inside the office or outside the office, it might not be a good idea for any of the people in the firm at, at all to know about that when you were monitoring for some other purpose purpose. But what about what about if you discover that they are that they are um, saying things which are untrue about other members of staff? For example, spreading the rumour that XYZ is having an affair with somebody else. Yes, that's uh, uh, that's true. Well <coughs> A A that, that would A that would be defamatory by the individual. B if the employer didn't do anything about it, they'd be colluding in the uh, defamation there. Um, yes, I've not come across uh, case like that, but admittedly I'm from Swindon, so it probably would be unlikely to come across it. Well, yeah, I'm not going to go into any details about <laughs> what people do in Swindon with their <coughs> members of their own family, but uh, uh, <coughs> there is a, um, no, there, there are, um, it is perfectly feasible to, to monitor to monitor words in, in emails and look for names. It can, but it's a bit like military capability. <coughs> you, you may be able to do something, whether you actually want to do that is, is another matter. Yeah, because it, yeah, it's a pyrrhic victory, if it, essentially. Okay, so um, that's one aspect of it. So monitoring, yes, it's 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 available. Um, what about things like screening of traffic? You know, blocking certain sites. Yes, some people do that. I know some employers that do block access to Facebook uh, work. I think that's a bit uh, uh, over the top because quite a lot of what we do in the office, we want to research a particular person. Looking them up on Facebook might be one of the things that would be quite legitimate. I've got one client who develops software uh, for gaming shops, and they're, they're quite cutting edge. And uh, uh, you won't know this in, but I'll explain it to you, that uh, some of the most advanced websites are the porn websites. Uh, and so you need to go really? into the porn websites to be able to see what advances have been made in website technology, right. or so I'm told. And so they had to take some of the blocks off because their developers did need to look at some of the porn sites to see what was actually capable, to see what uh, know-how they'd come up with and what ideas could be borrowed to develop their, their own firm's website. Right, right. Well, that's, a, uh, that's certainly a... Uh, a, a well, you, you give them... Well, there's, there's all sorts of uh, really rather crass jokes. That <laughs> don't, don't feel inhibited. No, 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 that's not going to... Uh, tunnels and the like. Um, no, there are. Uh, so that's one aspect of it. I mean, um, adult um, content, of course, is a. Uh, I mean, there are only there, there are only two things that make money on the internet. They are gambling and adult services. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, everything else. Effectively, the, the internet is just loses money. Right. You you run a website and, and effectively it's a cost to the business. Right. It's a cost to the business, and unless you're actually making money from it, there are sort of a it, it, it's an overall cost cost to the business. It doesn't it doesn't you know yes it's an advertising cost and so on. You can offset it. Yeah. And there are things that it is nonetheless a, a, an overhead for the business. But the um, uh, the things that actually generate cash are, are gambling and adult services. I mean the, the, the what's the position about somebody playing poker online or, or looking at uh, uh, <coughs> inappropriate content, this kind of thing at, at work? Right, two aspects of that. One, they're in breach of their employment contract because they're being paid to work and right. they're not working at the time. So uh, they're in breach of the duty of trust and confidence between the employee and the employer 
in, in those <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Nor normally there is a restriction in a policy that they're not allowed to look at adult content there. Now, uh, friends of mine who examine PCs say that there isn't a PC they've ever come across that hasn't looked at porn content at some point uh, or another. And I've heard that if you try to dismiss an employee because they have looked at porn, uh, they ask to see the records of the director's use of internet, and they then discover that the directors have looked at porn there, and then the argument is, well, if the directors are allowed to look at porn, why aren't the people further down the chain, further down the line, uh, allowed to look at porn? I've never been involved in that. I was peripherally involved in a case once where somebody had purchased porn uh, by using a company credit card, which of course was totally verboten, because it wasn't for those purposes. And it was on that ground that the employer was able to get rid of the employee. But at that stage, they did not have a policy for staff use of the internet. Um, and so without the illicit use of the company credit card, we, the employer would have been in quite a difficult position. What about things like theft of company data and use of, use of things like you know your Gmail account to, uh, to take customer lists? Yes, well technically you can't steal data because data is not capable of ownership. It's a wide, widespread myth that data can be uh, owned. But the illicit taking away of confidential information, possibly for reuse um, for the purposes of a new employer later or for reuse later, in the old days, people would go in at weekends and photocopy customer lists. Then people would make large transfers of data to a Gmail account. Nowadays, people bring memory sticks in and copy the data there. Now, I've dealt with quite a few of these cases where people have taken confidential information. Um, and there's a triangle there because there's the previous employer, perhaps we're acting for them. There's the former member of staff who's gone off to work for somebody else. And there's the new employer. And what happens is that you uh, write a letter to the former employee, but you also write a letter to the new employer and point out that this has happened. In a number of cases where I've been involved, the new employer has immediately fired uh, the former employee um, because they don't want them working for them if they've done those particular kinds of things. So there is a triangle. Always remember the possibility that if you do take confidential data uh, away, and you might try and use it for someone else's benefit. Now, I've had cases where the new employer has been as guilty as hell, and I've had a very, oh no, how could you possibly think that kind of response of letter? But at least they know that we've got them in the crosshairs at that stage. So I think it's unlikely that they'd be prepared to do it. The interesting point about this is, you know, I mean, on the other side of the fence, as one of these devils who work in sales, is that the um, if you look around at sales jobs now, yeah. nobody trains. Right. Nobody, nobody trains, nobody, and you know. Let's say you go for a job in a in an organisation that that sells platforms as a service. <coughs> now nobody leaves school with a with a uh, an NVQ in uh, in platforms as a service. You don't get a GCSE. In it. There's no degree right. in platforms as a service. It is just something that you know. You you. It's an industry that you fall into, or yep. it's a technology that you fall into. And the whole rationale is the fact that you know, the, the, if you look at the job ads now, it is all about must-have experience of selling platforms as a service. And what that means is there, the expectation is that you will bring clients with you. You will, you will, they're, they're, you know, in your, in your carpet bag of, uh, that yeah. you're bringing with you, you're bringing clients. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, how, how realistic is that to realise the fact that you're people... I mean, the contents of my phone, I've got customer, I've got customer data in my personal phone. Right. Okay. Uh, <coughs> now I know there are ways of, of flashing phones remotely, um, you know, using uh, using the, the using, using various various bits of technology. But uh, right. yeah, if it's my personal phone, I'll just say it's my phone, and no, you can't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how how does the law work in the, in those circumstances? Well, you you can have restrict as long as the restrictive covenants are not ex uh, excessive. You can have restrictive covenants so that uh, the departing salesman isn't allowed to contact that particular customer for six months or no longer than a year. Um, you can have a confidentiality obligation under the contract. There are things that you can do, whether you want to choose to try and enforce that, because I'm afraid it's quite a big ticket game. It would cost quite a lot of money to try and get an injunction to stop that from happening. And more to the, po more to the point is, is that the, uh, the, 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 the new em the employee, ex or new or however you want to say, could regard that as restraint of trade. It could, and that's 
if, if they feel it is in restraint of trade, if they can convince a court that that's the case. Now, I've come across lots of cases where there was a restriction for six months, and um, generally some employer, generally from Yorkshire, has thought, six months? Let's make it three years. And the moment you make it three years, uh, it's unenforceable. Now, I always think that... It has to be reasonable, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has. I always think that... Um, enforcing restricted covenants is a bit like that game that you play at fairs or at a circus where you have to make this sort of metal ring go around a very convoluted wire. Yeah. And if it touches at all, you failed. If the bell rings, it makes contact with the bell rings. Yeah. So when you look at restricted covenants, they must not be excessive so far as time is concerned. They must not be excessive so far as geographical area is concerned. They must not be excessive as to what kind of industry it covers. And if you fail on any of those points, and you could think of an absurd example that would be covered by it, then the restrictive covenant would uh, uh, not then be enforceable. So if you left, but you weren't able to sell cleaning services to the former customers you dealt with, you know, when you've been selling them computers beforehand, if theoretically it covered cleaning services as well, then there's something wrong with the covenant. Absolutely. Because it, should, it shouldn't be as wide as that. Right, right, right. So, or, or if you just said, well, actually, with the... Yes, yes, I've been selling them... Uh, IT, IT equipment in, in one job, the fact that I'm selling them a phone system in the next is uh, the fact that I happen to know that that, was a, that phone system was uh, uh, coming up for renewal is, is purely uh, it's just but, industry knowledge. Yeah, I, um, y you, you wouldn't be able to get a restricted covenant to, to combat against that. Right, right. Okay, well that's, that's actually really interesting. I'm gen genuinely kind of uh, uh, intrigued as to what we've talked about today. But, uh, is there anything we should add? No, I mean, the, we've talked about monitoring. I mean, it, it is settled law that if you tell a particular level of person that they've got, uh, they're allowed access on the computer to certain levels, but they're not, access to, they're not allowed access to other levels. You if mean they, within the network? Yes. Right. Uh, that if they breach that, I think the original case was Janssen, which is about 15, 20 years ago now. Um, I think it was a trade union official who decided to go and research um, all kinds of stuff on levels of the computer that they didn't have uh, legitimate access for, the dismissal in those circumstances was regarded as valid and enforced by the um, tribunal. I mean, one of the other things I would encourage um, employers to think about is to discourage, to discourage employees from downloading content from elsewhere, downloading programs that uh, might not, uh, you, know, that, you know, they're not paying properly for. So if there's, um, <coughs> if the employer benefits from the illicit downloading uh, of software, then both the individual who downloaded that software and also their employer um, will will be liable in those circumstances. So this would be unlicensed software, or, Correct. or yeah. a, a, a cracked license key, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. Right, right. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's an interesting interesting point to take, but uh, a good place to leave it. Thank okay. you very much. Okay.